Do you know what an exclusive listing is? And how that exclusive listing can affect you as a buyer not being able to find houses and or land, buildings, or commercial real estate for sale? Or maybe you're a seller and you've got an exclusive listing with a broker and you've discovered this may not get you the most amount of money for your property. I'm gonna cover this and more in this video, but before we proceed, be sure to subscribe to the channel, press the little bell symbol beside it and give the video a thumbs up. So essentially an exclusive listing is a listing with a broker and that's it. Sometimes more than one broker, but typically just one broker. So the brokers hold all the listings for the agents, whether there's one agent or 200, the broker ultimately owns those listings. So essentially by entering into an exclusive listing agreement, you basically enter into what I feel in my opinion is a complete oxymoron unless there's a reason for it, because you're sort of going against everything that's been built up, including the multiple listing system that you will not be a part of because you've signed an agreement that says only one brokerage or one agent is gonna show that an offer on that property unless the listing agreement, exclusive listing agreement is worded differently. To me, I don't get exclusive agreements. I've never done one. I do not plan on doing them because you're basically doing your client a disservice. Some vendors, owners, property owners may think that an exclusive listing is a way to uh, combat tire kickers or showings or low ball offers, but in my experience, again, it's not. The only thing you're gonna find in an exclusive listing is you're probably gonna get less money for the property because you've turned an auction on MLS where you've got, let's say 300 agents in PEI, each agent has five buyers, 1500 buyers looking at properties at any given point. So now you're limiting that to one or a handful of agents that are within that brokerage. The brokerages in PEI are fairly small, seldom over a few dozen, two, three dozen at most, maybe a little bit more. So basically you're limiting the exposure on your listing to that brokerage and you're counting on those agents to get on the phone, email, text, or social to advertise your property. You're not gonna be on MLS, which is our number one source of buyers right across the entire planet. So if someone is entering into an exclusive agreement. I don't know why you're doing that. Maybe the agent or brokerage is offering to discount fees, but it's sort of being penny wise and pound foolish and that you might be saving pennies over here and you're losing tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars over here. Because in a seller's market, if you do decide to go with an MLS listing, which is non-exclusive, you've got thousands of buyers out there lining up to look at your house potentially to create a giant auction. In closing, that auction can be controlled. Selling real estate does not have to be stressful, neither does buying real estate, which comes to my other question at the beginning of this video, which is how does this affect buyers? Well, in essence, I guess if you're a buyer and you wanna find out about all these exclusive listings, which in honesty, there's very few of them, you would have to contact every single agent and or broker on the island and ask them if they have anything that's listed exclusive that you can take a look at. Sort of a waste of your time in most cases. Anyone that's serious about selling will be on MLS, and if you have this search set up, which I've mentioned in many videos before, you'll know about the listing probably before anybody else. Thanks for watching this video. If you haven't already done so, be sure to press the subscribe button, the little bell beside it, and give the video a thumbs up. And if you have any questions at all about PEI real estate or Prince Edward Island in general, Put them in the comments below.